Well, a little while ago, I did a piece on what I thought were the best Bibles for preaching based on my personal preference of the ESV translation. And I'm not gonna get into translations in this video. I talked a little bit about it in that video, but that would be a much bigger piece. And so I compared the ESV Pastor's Bible with the ESV Preaching Bible. What I didn't count on is the number of people who wrote comments and wrote me emails and chimed in saying how much they loved the best-selling ESV Bible, the ESV Thinline. And so since I didn't have an ESV Thinline Bible on me at the time, I reached out to my friends at Crossway and being super generous people over there, they sent me a Thinline ESV Bible in genuine leather so that I could do an honest review and comparison. And so I've been using the ESV Thinline Bible for my primary Bible for the past month so I could really get into it, really get some use out of it and see why so many people love this Bible so much. So is the Thinline Bible the best all around Bible for a pastor? That's the question I wanna answer today. And I'm gonna tell you what I think, but first let's get into a little bit of a comparison between all of them. The first thing you're gonna be looking at is the price. And just looking at price, if you look at the ESV, thin line on Crossway's website, it's priced at about $50. But I'll tell you, if you go on Amazon, you can get a better deal where it's gonna be more in the $30 range. And that's a really good deal for a really quality, solid Bible. Now, if you go to the pastor's Bible and take a step up, you're gonna see it listed at about $80 on Crossway's website. So that's a lot more than the thin line but not too much more if you like the features and you like the extra size, uh, that's, that's gonna be a good price point for you there. Moving on to the Preaching Bible, this one is listed for $200. That's two with two zeros, and that is an expensive premium Bible price right there that you have to decide, is that gonna be worth it for you? But on Amazon, you can actually get a better deal on it for around $120 right now, which is pretty, pretty good for a premium, high quality, Bible like this one. So if you're just factoring in price, if price is a major decision maker for you because you're on a limited budget, I'd have to say the thin line definitely wins. For getting this for between 30 to $50, this is definitely the best bargain, the best deal out there for a really quality Bible. All right, the next thing we wanna look at is the cover of the Bible. Is it a good quality cover that's gonna last you a long time and it's gonna hold up to the everyday wear and tear of ministry? And looking at the Thin Line Bible, this one is in genuine leather and this cover is really, really good. The genuine leather cover, it's durable, it's strong, it's solid, but it's also a nice quality. It's a little soft to the touch still. The more I've used it throughout the last month, the more pliable it's gotten, a little bit softer, not quite as firm and stiff as it was in the beginning when I first opened it. And this is just a really good quality, cover that's guaranteed to last you a lifetime. And I really do think this is gonna hold up. I have no problem uh, feeling like this cover is gonna protect this Bible if I were to just toss it in a bag or shove it somewhere in my pocket. If I had a pocket big enough to fit this, if I'm wearing cargo pants or something, right? Um, but if you were to throw this in a bag, toss it in your car, carry it with you everywhere, this cover is going to last. It's gonna hold up. It's a good, good cover. Now the pastor's Bible, the cover is the same, it's genuine leather, just like the Thin Line genuine leather. And it's really roughly just about the same as, as what you're getting with the Thin Line. It's quality, it's strong, it's durable. I have no problem carrying this with me. Uh, it's a solid, good leather cover, just like the Thin Line. But now, if you move up to the Pastor's Bible, one of the reasons it's more expensive is because this one is goat skin leather and it is just beautiful it is soft you have to feel it you have to smell it just smells good um, you could take a nap on this thing it is just a really quality soft flexible just really nice nice leather that you really have to see and feel to understand the difference between the goat skin leather and the genuine leather. Again, this is guaranteed to last your lifetime. However, I will say that with the flexibility of the goat skin leather, it does make me a little bit more nervous to take this Bible and toss it in a bag or throw it uh, in the side of my car, taking with me to a Bible study or to a meeting because the flexibility of it, I'd be worried that it would flip over, it would bend too much and maybe get the page is damaged because the cover flopped and, and moved too easily. And so for the quality of the leather, 
I will have to say the winner goes to the Preaching Bible because it's just such nice quality, good goatskin leather. However, for durability, for, for everyday wear and tear, I will say that the Pastor's Bible and the Thin Line Bible, the genuine leather actually feels a little more sturdy to me. Next, we wanna compare the size of the Bible. The Thin Line's roughly 5.375 inches wide. It's gonna be 8.375 inches tall, and it's less than an inch thick. So this is a, the Thin Line is just a really, really great size of a Bible for carrying around with you. I found myself when I was doing my personal Bible study with this over the last month, uh, easily just picking it up and carrying it with me, easily opening it up in one hand and just holding it in one hand and just reading with one hand open to the Bible, my other hand being able to uh, use to track the text with me or um, to pull up my Logos Bible app on my phone if I wanted to compare a commentary or something else as I'm studying the Bible. And it was great and easy to handle in just one hand. I love the size of this. Now, also the weight of this Bible is only 1.62 pounds, which makes it really light, really portable, really easy. You're not gonna get really tired out carrying this. And so for the portability and the size aspect, you gotta love the, the form factor of the thin line. It's great. And I can see why so many people love this size of a Bible. Now, if you compare that with the pastor's Bible, the pastor's Bible is about six inches wide by nine inches tall. If you compare the two together, the Pastor's Bible you can see is just a little bigger than the Thin Line, and it's also just a little over an inch thick. So where the Thin Line is under an inch thick, the Pastor's Bible is just a little bit over an inch thick. So it's not too much of a difference, but you can tell the difference when you're holding it in your hand. But where you're really seeing the difference is just in the little bit extra width and a little bit extra height on the Pastor's Bible. The weight of it is 2.16 pounds. It's a little bit heavier than the Thin Line, although I do think that the two pounds, just a little over two pounds, really not that big of a deal. Um, but I did find myself holding it more with two hands, whereas the Thin Line, it just felt more natural to hold with one. The Preaching Bible is a lot bigger. It is 6.2 inches wide. It is 9.125 inches tall, and it is just under two inches thick. And the Preaching Bible is 3.62 pounds so that is over double the thin line bible and that feels you can feel the difference it's a lot heavier a lot bulkier a lot bigger as well so the winner of the size category if size is a major factor to you is gonna be the thin line because it's just so portable it's such a great nice size now unless you're on the flip side you're like i just want a really big really substantial weighty bible to show how much god's word is how much gravity god's word has in my life well then you're going to be more drawn to the preaching bible because it does show just how big and weighty and thick god's word is all right next you want to compare the layout of the bible so when you open up the bible what's the inside page looking like and if you look at the thin line bible first you'll notice the thin line bible has a smaller eight point font and for some people that is a problem if you're getting older and need reading glasses that's going to be a little bit harder to read for me right now in my stage of life it's not so bad but i do know that as i get older and as i age that is a bit of a concern am i going to be able to read that eight point font very well also the double column on the thin line is nice because you get a lot more text on each page however also, that's a lot more clutter on each page. It's a lot more to look at on each page. And so if you're using it for preaching, for teaching, it's a little easier to lose your spot on a page when there's so much extra text. The margins on the Thin Line Bible are very small. It's very small margins. And so if you're somebody who likes to take notes in your Bible, if you're somebody who wants to write in your Bible a lot, you're not gonna have a lot of room for that. Also, there is some moderate ghosting on the Thin Line Bible. The pages are a little bit thinner and you can actually, if you're looking closely, you can see through the other ink on the back side of the page and even the page behind it showing a little bit through. It's not terrible. It's not the worst I've ever seen. It's still pretty good and it doesn't really get too much in the way, but that can be a little bit distracting. It can be a little bit of a problem. Also, it's not text aligned, which means that the ink on the back side of the page is not on the exact same line as the ink on the front side of the page. So again, you're gonna see the ink show through a little bit more just because they haven't done that extra step to make sure it's that way. So looking at the layout of the past 
pastor's Bible. Compared to the Thinline Bible, you'll notice right away that the pastor's Bible does have a little bit bigger font. The pastor's Bible bumps it up to a nine point font, which is a little easier on the eyes. It's a little bit nicer when you're reading, not quite as big of a strain to see the text. You don't have to get as close to the Bible if your vision isn't as good. So you gotta like that extra nine point font size. Again, like the Thinline, it is double column. And unlike the thin line, it does include cross references in the bottom right hand corner of every single page. So if you like the cross references for studying, you're gonna like that extra cross reference in the bottom corner of each page. Like the thin line also, there is moderate ghosting. I think it might be a little bit better on the pastor's Bible, but it's, it's almost hard to tell any difference. It's almost indecipherable between this Bible and the thin line Bible. Also like the thin line Bible, the pastor's Bible is not text aligned. So you're gonna see a lot more of that text through the page because the, the lines aren't matching up on both sides. The pastor's Bible also has very narrow margins, a lot like the thin line Bible, and you're not gonna be able to write a lot of notes in there if margins are important to you. This is not the Bible for that. All right, moving up to the preaching Bible, you're gonna see that this is where the preaching Bible really shines in the layout. It's one of the reasons it's so much bigger and more expensive, but it is a single column so you don't have the double columns cluttering up the page. It's just one nice big single column to read to help you stay focused on what area you are at in the text without all the extra clutter around it. It's also a much bigger font at a 10 point font. So again, that makes it easier to read a little bit bigger, way better on the eyes. If you're standing in the pulpit, you're preaching and you're looking down, you don't need to get as close or to strain as hard to see it. It's a lot more legible at a 10 point font. The margins are fairly wide. It's a good size where you could fit quite a bit of notes in there if you wanted to jot some notes down you got that extra room. And even if you're not a note taker, just having that extra white page, extra margin on the page just really makes it a lot easier to read, a little easier on the eyes. It's just aesthetically pleasing and uh, nice to look at when you just got that extra space. Feels like you can breathe a little while you're reading the text. The ghosting from the ink showing up on the backside of the page is very minimal. You won't see a lot of ink through. You can still see it showing through, but this one is by far the best of the three. You will see less in this one than you will in the other one. And also the really big difference you'll notice here is that this Bible, the preaching Bible, is text align so the text on the back side of the page is on the exact same line as the text on the front side of the page and so you don't see it bleeding through as much even the stuff you can see because it's hidden behind the ink i love love the the attention to detail that they take the extra mile they go in the preaching bible to make sure that that's set up nicely for you so if i have to pick a winning bible for the layout of the bible i would have to go with the preaching bible i love the layout for just the experience of reading the page the preaching bible does have the nicest cleanest most easy to read layout for me and i love that but i will give an honorable mention to the pastor's Bible. I do like the cross references. I do like some of the additional features in there. And so if I were studying more, I would like to have that in it a little bit more. All right, next we have a test that's really important for preachers and that is the lay flat test. That's also the Genesis 1 or the Revelation 22 test, right? This is the test that says if I open my Bible up and I'm preaching from Genesis chapter 1 and I leave it on my note stand, is it going to stay open to Genesis chapter 1 or is it going to start closing up on me? If I open it up to Revelation and I'm preaching in the end of my Bible in Revelation 22, is it going to stay open or is it going to start closing on me and I'm going to lose my spot or I have to set something on top of the Bible to weigh it down? And so when you're doing the lay flat test, the thin line Bible struggled. Just opening it up to Genesis 1, it started to creep back up and it did not stay open. It, it, it almost closed. It didn't quite close, but it made me really, really, really nervous. And even after using it for a good month, it still is, is struggling on staying open at Genesis chapter 1 does not lay flat very well. It doesn't close, but it doesn't lay flat very well. So it's doable, but you're gonna have to put something, something to weigh down on it, like maybe set your phone on top of it or something else to weigh it down, to hold it down if you were to use it for preaching and wanted it to stay open on that page. And again, in Revelation 22, I opened it up and left it there on the table and it's, again, just creeped up, creeped up, creeped up. And literally over a matter of minutes, it just kept slowly going until it stopped. It didn't quite close, but it still kind of just hovered, just barely open to the point where it would be a big distraction. 
And that makes me really, really nervous because I would be afraid that a rogue gust of wind or the air conditioner kicks on and before you know it, all of a sudden that thing is is gone or I'm getting windy in the pulpit right and I'm breathing too hard, getting excited and uh, something happens or I'm waving my hands around and that gust of wind could blow that cover shut. And that makes me really, really nervous to use something like the thin line strictly for preaching. It's doable, but you're gonna want something to weigh it down or to hold it open for you to keep it there, to, just to set on that page. And so that makes it not quite as ideal. And that's where the thin line really begins to struggle if you're thinking about it for an all around Bible for a pastor. Now the pastor's Bible, as I mentioned in the previous review, did pretty good on the stay flat test. It opened up to Genesis chapter one and it held there, but it creeped up a little ways, making me a little nervous, but it was usable. And if you were to set something on it, it would be just fine. And again, in Revelation 22, when you opened it all the way up, it it stayed open, but it creeped up and creeped up and kind of held at an angle. And again, made me a little nervous, but it was much better, I'll have to say, than the thin line. Now, having the same cover, the genuine leather in the pastor's Bible and the genuine leather in the thin line, I would have expected them to operate about the same with a similar cover. But I think just the extra size and the extra length on the cover in the pastor's Bible does help in this regard. It gives it a little bit more weight on the end of the page. So when it's folded over, it's stays down a little bit better than the smaller page with less weight in the thin line. And that's another place where I think the pastor's Bible does make a better Bible for preaching or just leaving open on your desk. Now looking at the preaching Bible, this again is where the preaching Bible really shines for preaching because if you opened it up, when I did the lay flat test and you opened it up to Genesis 1, it laid flat and it stayed flat and there was no concerns, no worries there for me whatsoever with just that beautiful flexible cover and everything else. And then again, in Revelation 22, you opened it up and it laid flat and it stays flat. And with that, there is no concerns using this for preaching. So the winner of the lay flat test by far is the preaching Bible. I give the pastor's Bible a nod saying, okay, you passed, but you could use a little work. But then the thin line Bible, you're making me nervous. You're barely staying open and I'd be very concerned about using this. All right, last but not least, you need to talk about some of the additional features of the Bible because that's one of the things that sets the Bibles apart. The thin line Bible does have a concordance in the back, which is really helpful to have if you're trying to look up something, trying to reference something, it's nice to have a concordance here. So if I'm looking up something like disobedience, there it lists a few different references. There's, there's some really great references in here. As a pastor, somebody asks you a question about something and it kind of puts you on the spot and you're like, oh shoot, I can't remember what's that verse again it'd be really easy to go to their concordance, find the topic that the person asked about real quick, find the reference to what page it's on, and then pull up that verse to share with that person as you're helping counsel them or give them some references or just answer questions that they have about their faith. There's also some maps in the back, which can be helpful if you wanna reference them as you're studying. And a big difference to the Thin Line Bible compared to the others is that the words of Christ are in red. Now, some people love that because it really stands out. It shows, okay, this is everywhere that Jesus is speaking. However, it can be a downside when you're preaching because it makes it a little bit harder to read. The text in red is not quite as bold, not quite as dark as the text in black. Also, the Thin Line Bible does have one ribbon marker, which is really handy, really helpful. I use it as I'm reading through the Bible just to keep my place so I can flip back to it really quick. Or if you're preaching to hold that spot of where the text is that you're primarily preaching from, it's great to have that extra ribbon in there. Now, the Pastor's Bible has two ribbons, so you get a little bit extra for your money there. You get that second ribbon, which can be helpful if you're flipping back and forth to different spots. Some people love that extra ribbon, that's great. Also, Pastor's Bible comes loaded with extra pastoral resources. So in the beginning of the Bible, you're gonna have some extra articles and things to help you. In the middle of the Bible, you're also gonna have something between the Old Testament and the New Testament where there's gonna be a bunch of different helpful resources for you about how to do a baptism service or a funeral service or a wedding service, which can be really helpful. There are some things in there that I'm not such a fan of because I don't do infant baptism and there's an infant baptism thing in there. And again, in the back, there's more resources. And then a few spots in between in the text, there are a few little articles that are helpful geared just to pastors. So if you like that, 
that's a good little bonus thing in there for you. Not absolutely necessary, but it can be really helpful. And then as I mentioned earlier, there is the cross references in the text that the other two Bibles do not have. So you got the extra cross references in there for when you're studying. As far as additional features for the preaching Bible, there are two ribbons, just like the pastor's Bible, although these ribbons are crazy long and I probably want to trim them up at some point because they're just so big. And if you like long ribbons though, there you go, you got them. And the layout and everything inside is very minimal. There's a few maps in the back. There's a few tables of like weights and measures in the back. But other than that, it's pretty bare bones, pretty minimum, just minimalist, get to the text. Not a lot of additional features in the preaching Bible. So if you're looking for additional features, if you want those extra things in your Bible, the winner of this category would have to be the pastor's Bible. There's a lot more helps in there. There's a lot more practical resources that are help pastors especially if you're just getting started in ministry and you need those extra resources and having the cross references, having those extra things in there really are a nice add. So you're getting more value, I think, in the pastor's Bible if you're looking for those additional resources. All right, so is the ESV Thinline Bible the best all around Bible for pastors? And I would say, Mostly, yes, um, it really is a great all around Bible. If you could only get one Bible, you're on a tight budget, you don't mind the eight point font and the more compact sizes that benefit to you, then I think, yes, the Thin Line is a great Bible all around for pastors. It's not the best for preaching, but for an everyday all around Bible, you really can't go wrong with the Thin Line. It's a great, great, great Bible. And the beauty of this one is you can get different covers. If you like the genuine leather, you can go genuine leather. If you want the goat skin, like the preaching Bible, I haven't tested that one out. That might lay flat a lot better. And uh, you could go with that one in a more uh, premium options. It's really easy to see why so many pastors love this Bible, why so many use it as their everyday carry, throw in their bag, throw in their car, bring with them to the Bible study, bring with them to the counseling session, bring with them everywhere, study out of it, read out of it. It's a great all around Bible, just not the best for preaching and not the best if you want a little bit bigger font size. For portability and affordability, the ESV Thinline is the best all-around Bible for your budget for a pastor who is money conscious, who just wants a really good quality Bible that will last them for years in ministry. You can't go wrong with it. Pick it up if you're considering. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in the next one.